Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email me tmasso at thewatchbox.com. It's in the description below. Your purchase and pricing email question line for buying this or any watch you see on any of our platforms. Please reach out to me directly for pricing. I am tmasso at thewatchbox.com. The Chopic Onto Artique is a hit, one of the best new introductions to an admittedly crowded class of timepieces. The Chopic Onto Artique arrived in 2020 and it did move the ball. New features, superb ergonomics, and a fantastic entry into the sports watch class by a brand previously producing dress models. The Chopic Onto Artique was upgraded for 2021 with the Passage de Drake model, and this is the Passage de Drake Roaring 40s a 40-piece stainless steel limited edition with a lovely dial known as the Eternity Cut from Chopek partner Metalem. More on that in a moment. The whole watch is 40.5 millimeters in diameter, 11.6 millimeters thick, 44.5 millimeters from lug to lug if we just include the case. But as you can see, there's a little bit of flare from the bracelet itself, so the total rigid distance across the wrist is 46.8 millimeters. Now, I often call out the ergonomics of the Antarctique because it really does wear beautifully. In a class where a lot of watches wear a size or two larger than their rated size, this really does feel like a 40.5. It's also flat. A lot of watches in this class are thick. This feels wonderfully competitive with the best in the segment, much like a Vacheron overseas self-winding. It's flat enough to fit underneath any kind of a cuff, and yet it's automatic steel, self-winding, and well-loomed. It's a real sports watch. I could recommend it for a wrist as small as 13 and a half centimeters circumference, in fact, especially since it comes with an even more flexible accessory strap. Yes, it comes with a rubber strap, and there's a quick-release lug system that lets you avail of it. Here's over the top, here's down the barrel, and one more cuff shot. The strap and the bracelet both are beautifully made. The quick release system has a rotating lock. You turn it, it unlocks, it releases the bracelet. The bracelet is fully integrated, matching the taper of the lugs all the way down to the clasp. You can see we have several removable links, and these several removable links use a bar and pin system, so you will need a block and punch if you want to size this at home, but there are many individual removable links, so you will be able to find a good fit. Double folding clasp, twin trigger release. You can see that it features the Chapek logo externally, the twin triggers ensuring it can't pop open accidentally. Finish is good, though it's not quite as intricate as the bracelets of the Royal Oak, the 5711 or later 5811 or the Overseas, but this watch makes up for perhaps less nuance in the bracelet with fantastic detail and nuance everywhere else. You can see that the case flanks have been hollowed, which gives it a lovely sort of lighter look. It seems open, airy, prismatic. The lug profiles are extremely angular, and you can see that they're sharply faceted with satination, giving it a very 70s look, and that is the intent, but it doesn't look like a specific 70s watch. It's good to be able to capture the spirit of an era without plagiarizing, and that's what's done here. You can see we have satination, polishing, and then on the outer face of the crown here, media blast with the founding date of the original Chapek company. The crown guards feature a combination of polished bevels and satination, and then the bezel itself, you can see it's inset from the case band to create the impression of a smaller, thinner watch. It is quite thin in any case. The outer face of the bezel is satinated, then inboard you can see there's a conical polished profile giving way to a dramatically boxed and cambered sapphire that is anything but cheap. That much camber, that much loft, expensive sapphire. The dial was created by Metalem. You can see Fabrique en Suisse, and Metalem is a super high-end luxury dial maker that specializes in metalized effects like guilloche stamping and solarization or sunbursts. You can see here we have that lovely pattern that has a wonderful shading effect that shifts as you move it around. It isn't the same from any two angles. They call this the eternity cut or the stairway to eternity cut. And it does in fact look like a stairway to the heavens. The indices are polished and faceted and you can see there's quite a bit of subtlety about how they are faceted. The same is true of the hands at center. There's no shortage of luminescence. This is a very sporty sports watch, and in good taste, they also loomed the 12 up at 12 o'clock. Let's take a quick look at some of the features here. Screw down crown, so the 120 meter water resistance is a hard 
120 meters. Let's just make sure we're not the day change danger zone. Turns out we were. I love the symmetry here. If you take a look, see the font used for the two? It's the same font used for the two at the top of the dial. A lot of companies make a mistake there. These guys, not so much. There's a track out board with raised indices that allows you to track the minutes as well as the seconds. And then we have a raised and you can see relieved Chapek Genève logo, complete with the accent. Turning it all over, we have a sensational movement, the creation of which was overseen by Emmanuel Boucher, a master independent watchmaker who created the Harry Winston Opus 12, so that is the pedigree of this caliber. I'm going to do my best to show it to you in detail. SXH5, exclusive to Chapek and created with its friends. It is a micro rotor automatic with a 56 hour power reserve. You can see an unusual feature here. Some of these have rose gold rotors. This one has a platinum rotor, which improves the winding efficiency, but notes that the platinum them is 100% recycling. I don't know that there was ever a problem with scrap platinum floating up on beaches in Bali, but I guess it's nice to know that instead of throwing away our platinum, we are recovering it for use in watches like this. Again, a small feather in its cap. It's the mechanical spec of this that's going to impress you. Also very impressive in the case of this movement, the architecture. Architecture is the relative shape and proportions and placement of elements relative to each other. Finishing is how they're decorated. You can see we have the barrel with the ratchet wheel atop. We have a drivetrain with finger style bridges like an old Geneva pocket watch. And then we have a dual anchored balance bridge with a free sprung balance at the base. The full bridge with the free sprung architecture means that this watch, which is adjusted in five positions, can take and hold a regulation even in the face of concussion. The free sprung architecture and the full bridge giving a greater shock tolerance. It beats away at a modern standard four hertz or eight beats per second, so you don't have to worry about gaining power reserve with a slow beat rate. There are slow beat watches out there that have impressive power reserves, but less potential accuracy because of low beat rates. That's not a problem here. This is eight beats per second. We have the stop second and quick set functions. It all pivots on 28 joules. And then it is beautifully decorated. My favorite feature being this center wheel bridge that is steel. It's black polished across its top. Then it's beautifully beveled on its outer edge. And I wish I could show you that there. You can really see the beveling lighting up under my finger. And then finally, the standout element of finishing here is the interior of that skeletonized bridge where you have four sharp interior angles in steel where bevels meet. You can also see that the ratchet wheel has polished teeth and that it's satinated across its top and that the barrel itself below is solarized. All screw heads are black polished and then they have chamfered slots in circumference. You can also see that the bridges are mirror beveled on their edges. Then they have raised, relieved, and satinated channels on their shoulders and they're media blasted internally with the media blasted elements recessed just like a Grunefeld movement. Truly impressive stuff. And again, one out of 40, so a very limited edition. You can even see them sweating the details. No, not the recycled platinum, which still makes me chuckle. But you can see that the rotor bearing uses unlubricated ceramic balls, and so does the train behind the rotor. That's a detail I rarely see. Ceramic balls, unlubricated, high efficiency, and they never need to be replaced. If you love this watch, reach out to Tmaso at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details.